Let's start at the beginning. I've entitled this, The Calling. We're aiming it at all of us who are in leadership in the Church of Jesus Christ. Whatever your position might be, you're there because you were called. You were called by God. This was His will from all eternity that you and I would be doing what we're doing right now. And in the busy pace of every day, we often lose sight of that fact. And that's an encouraging fact. That's something that keeps you going during the hard times. For example, we read in Ephesians 1, Paul the Apostle begins, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Nobody can make someone a minister, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, and all the other ministries that God has put in to lead his flock. Uh, no one can do that. No seminary, no Bible school, no committee, no denomination. No one can make someone a minister of the good news of Jesus Christ except God himself. We were called to this. Before, as we read in Jeremiah, before we were shaped in our mother's womb, God says, I knew you, Jeremiah. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you to do a certain task for me. And I wanna say that to you today. I wanna to encourage myself. Before I was born, before I was found in my mother's womb, God already knew about me, he knew about you, and he appointed us to do something important for his kingdom. We're not working for AT&T or Apple, we are working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is a sacred privilege chosen by God. Seminaries and Bible schools and discipleship, they have their place, but only God can put the gifting and the calling into someone. Then other people can come along and hopefully we develop that, we see it come to more maturity, etc. But Jesus said in John chapter 15, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you, apostles, disciples, you 12, I've chosen you that you would go out and bear much fruit so that my Father would be glorified. So I want us to just dwell on that for a moment. You've been chosen by God. I don't care how you've been beat down, who criticizes us, how we struggle and feel impotent sometimes and insufficient for the task. God chose us. God called us. He set us where we are right now ministering for him. And it has nothing to do with our IQs. It has nothing to do with our background, how long we've been Christian, how mature we are. It has nothing to do with those things. The sovereign God chose you and I to represent him. Think about that. He chose us, and many times the choice is so unlikely. I think of my own life. Uh, I have an older brother who is much more qualified to be a minister than uh, I would ever think to be, much brighter than I was. I have a younger sister. She was a better Christian than I was in, in uh, high school and college age. Uh, but out of those three, the children my mom and dad had, God chose me, the other two are serving the Lord, but I'm the one in leadership. I can assure you it's not because of my track record, and the same with you. God sovereignly, graciously chooses us to do this work. And imagine what he's entrusted us with. He calls us shepherds of one kind or another, leaders of his flock, if you're pastoring today or over a group of people, God calls you a shepherd under the, great, under the great shepherd, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the good shepherd. But we have this role of shepherding God's people, and what do shepherds do? Well, number one, they feed the flock. That's our responsibility which we're gonna have to answer for one day. Have I been feeding people good food or giving them junk food? And have I been feeding them what they wanna eat or what God wants them to chew on so that they can mature? That's the role of a shepherd. He also protects the flock. There's a lot of crazy things out there that could deceive the flock, pull them away from Jesus Christ, pull them away from pure devotion to the Lord, and it's the job of the shepherd 
is to protect them, to warn them, to love them, to be there for them. This is what God entrusted you and I. It's amazing. This is just amazing that he would entrust you and I with this important task. Not only that, but we're to lead the flocks. That's what a shepherd does. He feeds, he protects, but he also leads. And we're to lead them to a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not about you. It's not about me. Let's not make it about you or me. It's about Jesus. There's only one superstar in Christianity, and that's Jesus Christ. And God has entrusted you and I to lead the people into a deeper knowledge, to pray for them, that they'll have a deeper understanding of who Jesus Christ really is. Well, I've been talking about privilege, but you know with privilege comes what? responsibility. The greater the privilege, the greater the responsibility. That's why James, uh, the half-brother of our Lord, says in James 3 verse 1, don't many of you want and and try to be teachers and leaders? Because remember, we're going to incur a stricter judgment. Wow. Pastors and leaders have a stricter judgment than the person in the pew. That's the Bible truth. Why? I not only have to answer for myself, but now I have to, in some way, answer for where the people are at. How have I fed them? How have you and I protected them? Where did we lead them? Did we lead them into nonsense, into our church, into our personality, or did we lead them properly, like a good shepherd, into the Lord Jesus Christ and his gracious arms? So, Paul in 1 Corinthians 3 says, ministers are like builders. Paul called himself a master builder. And he says, we're building a building as we're doing our work every day. We've been chosen, we've been privileged to work on God's building, which is the church. And Paul says now, be careful though how you build because the foundation is Jesus Christ. We're working in the church that Jesus purchased with his own precious blood. He had to shed blood to make people be able to know salvation, then put them in flocks that you and I can minister to. So Paul says, now be careful, Jim, be careful, minister, whoever you might be. Be careful how you build, because there's coming a day that with this privilege is going to come responsibility. We're going to be judged. How will we be judged? We won't face judgment for our sins because God, by his his grace, has provided an atonement for our sins. But we leaders are going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ to see what exactly were we building with. Was it precious stones and gold and silver or was it wood, hay, stubble? Was it just junk, just slop something up? He said every one of of our work will be tested by fire. And the fire will reveal what I've been doing all these years, what you've been doing all these years. It won't matter what your peers think. It won't matter what your denominational leaders think. That'll be irrelevant in that day. I am going to stand with Carol before the Lord Jesus Christ and have to give an answer for the quality of the work I've been doing. Well, how would you measure quality? You measure quality by the kind of ministry that God enjoins upon us found in his word. He points us to what ministry should be in his church. Remember, he's not building my church. He's building his church. And he's let us come along for the ride as leaders, as co-workers, builders on this beautiful edifice called the Church of Jesus Christ. So, my dear friends, listen. Every day is important. Every sermon is important. God is seen uh, not in the book of Revelation. Christ is not seen walking, trying to get into the White House or the stock market or the NFL, find out how they're doing. He's walking among the seven golden lampstands, which are the churches. Why is he concerned? Because those are his people. You know, we're the light of the world, but what if the light isn't shining? We're the body of Christ. The people are. But what if the body's weak because of bad shepherding? No, listen, there's no unimportant day. You and I are privileged. What a blessing. There's no unimportant sermon or prayer meeting or counseling session. God's eye is upon us, rooting for us, 
offering us all the grace we need and wisdom and strength and understanding to do this work. So don't be discouraged. Listen up. Don't be discouraged. I know what discouragement is and has been in my life. What a detriment. And same for you. But we can't be discouraged. Too many ministers dropping out, leaving the ministry. And some drop out without leaving the ministry. That's the saddest part. I travel around the world and around the country many times talking to ministers in thousands or in, in dozens. And you find some have just given up. They quit. They got discouraged. They can't deal with that board and the people and the financial challenges. So they quit while they're doing it. We can't do that. You can't do that. Come on, we're going to do this. God is on our side. He's going to help us. Why don't we pray together? Lord, give us new inspiration to do the sacred calling that you've given us. God, we don't deserve it. We don't merit it. And yet here we are, chosen by you, just like you chose Luther and Wesley and James and John and Peter and Paul. You chose us. Help us, Lord. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Help us to do ministry for you as never before. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Blessings.